Okay, so you've opened your Fidelity investment account and you're ready to start securing your future retirement. Maybe you've even done some research and you know the types of investments out there, such as mutual funds or index funds or exchange traded funds, or maybe even dividend stocks or quality individual stocks. But then you come across this thing called Fidelity Freedom Funds. And then you start thinking to yourself, hmm, I like freedom. In this video, I promise to provide you the most comprehensive review here available on YouTube of Fidelity Freedom Funds. We're gonna talk about what they are. Why are they different than other types of investments? Who might be a great fit for them? How do you pick the right Fidelity Freedom Fund year? How have Fidelity Freedom Funds performed in the past? Are they right for me? And it's important that you stick around all the way to the end of the video because I'm gonna provide you some really important information at the end that's gonna help you pick the right fund and not one that's way too expensive. All right, I'm ready to get started here. I've got my green Fidelity shirt on, ready to go. Let's get started. Hey guys, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button below the video to ensure you do not miss any future videos I post. Make sure to leave a comment below saying you subscribed and I promise to respond personally to your comment. All right guys, you know I don't wanna waste a single moment of your time. Let's go ahead and jump right into the content here. First thing we wanna talk about is what are Fidelity Freedom Funds? Well, first off, you should know they also go by another name, which is a target date fund. That's actually the term that Vanguard uses on their website for their version of these types of funds, these target date retirement funds and these fidelity freedom funds are designed to take additional responsibilities off of the investor by owning an index fund or a mutual fund for that matter you're already delegating some of the responsibility for your investments to another company because they are taking care of the diversification for you instead of having to buy yourself hundreds or thousands of different stocks or bonds they're buying those on your behalf and consolidating into one fund for you. That's a standard index fund. But to go even further, these freedom funds will then additionally take the responsibility of managing your investments over time, and they will do that for you as well. You should also know that the underlying investments in these types of Fidelity Freedom Funds are usually index funds from Fidelity as well. So it's almost like it's a fund of additional funds. Okay, so why are Fidelity Freedom Funds different than other types of investments? All right, so check it out. Depending when you start investing, you might just be 20 25 to 35 years old. The world is still your oyster. You have big dreams and your life experience is totally different than somebody who is now ready to stop working and begin retirement. As you get older, your life changes. You might get married, have kids to start a family, move across the country, start your own business, but no matter what, every year you get older and you get closer to retirement. As you get closer to retirement, you want your assets to become more secure and your focus slowly changes to ensuring you keep your assets rather than building them up. That generally means owning less risky investments like stocks and owning more conservative investments like bonds. Now, when you do that, it's gonna be dependent on what type of investor you are. You might be very risk averse and you, from the very beginning, wanna own a balanced portfolio of stocks and bonds just because you don't like to see wild swings in your portfolio. On the flip side, you might be very comfortable with risk in your portfolio. You know that you've got a long time horizon and therefore you would prefer to just own individual stocks, maybe dividend stocks, or perhaps a one fund portfolio like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ composite, a lot of people find themselves between those two different spectrums. Meaning you may be very comfortable with risk upfront when you're first getting started investing, but over time and as you get closer to your target retirement date, you wanna make sure that your assets are conservative and secure so you have them when you need them. Fidelity Freedom Funds, meet that need. You can see here that when you choose a Fidelity Freedom Fund, let's say Freedom Fund 2045, your asset allocation in 2021 is very much in domestic equity or international equity, AKA stocks. In fact, 90% in stocks and 10% in bonds. And as you can see here over time, things start to change and your portfolio is rebalanced and adjusted to ensure that your portfolio is made up of more conservative investments over time as you get ready to retire. Okay, so how do you pick the right Fidelity Freedom Fund for you? Well, you have to ask yourself a really important question. When? Do you want to retire? Now, I can appreciate that's a very loaded question because it depends on a lot of different factors. It depends on how old you are. How much money have you already saved for retirement? And that number could change over time as your life 
experiences change. Maybe you have kids when you didn't plan on having kids. Maybe you were married and planning to stay with that person for life, and now all of a sudden you're not with that person anymore, and what you thought your future looked like is different. Things change over time. But the point is, once you know when you want to retire, let's say you want to retire in 2050 or 2055 or 2045, you can use this interactive widget here on the Fidelity website here to identify when you want to retire. So let's say it's 2021, we'll call it 2020 for the rounding to five years, and you want to retire in 2050. Well, then that would be 30 years from now. You would go to 30 years, click submit, and boom, you've got the Fidelity Fund 2050. That would be the most relevant Fidelity Freedom Fund for you. And as you can see here, over time, like I mentioned, the funds are adjusted so that when you get close to 2050, your portfolio is much more balanced between stocks and bonds. All right, let's talk a little bit about how Fidelity Freedom Funds have performed because you know this is all a great conversation, but if these funds stink, well then why would you buy them? Let's take a look at three different Fidelity Freedom Funds. We'll look at the Fidelity Freedom 2015 Fund, 2025 Fund, and 2060 Fund. The truth of the matter here is we don't have a long track record for these funds. Most of them were created around 2005, to 2010, with some of them even being created in the past five to six years. Let's take a look first here at the Fidelity Freedom Index 2015 Fund Investor Class. Ticker symbol here is FLIFX. First thing I want to call out for you is that this fund was created in 2009. So it's a 2015 target date fund that was created in 2009. It doesn't have a long track record here. You'll notice here that the expense ratio is 0.12%, which is fairly low considering all that you're having Fidelity do on your behalf. Again, Again, the way that expense ratios work is that 0.12% is taken based off of your assets invested in the fund and that amount is deducted from the net assets. So that fee doesn't come out of your actual personal account. You don't see it get deducted. It just gets taken out of the total net assets and your total value in the portfolio goes down. Just for your own awareness here, let's say you had $100,000 invested in the fund. We would take 0.12% and it would be $120 every year to own this fund. I would make the argument that that is not a significant fee to pay to ensure that your portfolio is not only diversified, which it would be, but also managed over time. If you look at the asset allocation for this fund, you'll see 26% approximately in the total market index fund, 18% in international stocks, and 42% in bonds, made up of the Fidelity Bond Index Fund and the Long Term Treasury Bond Index Fund. The 42% in bonds will be made up of four different investments the Fidelity Series Bond Index Fund is the biggest one at 35%, Long-Term Treasury Bond, 2.88%, Inflation Protected Bond Index Fund, 6.28%, and then short-term debt and net other assets would be the Fidelity Series Treasury Bill Index Fund, 11%. Again, it's a fund of different Fidelity Index Funds. Let's talk about the performance of this fund here. Average annual total returns. You can see here the one-year return is 10.63%, the three-year return is 6.97%, five-year return is 9%, 10-year return is 6.55%, and since 2009 when it was created, the fund has returned an average annual return of 7.28%. I think that's reasonable, that's a good return. Now, could you have done better than that by owning just the S&P 500? Yes, you could have. But the point is here that we're letting Fidelity manage our assets over time, and if we remember that for owning the 2015 fund, we're trying to retire in 2015, which is why we have that balance between stocks and bonds. Let's take a look here at the Fidelity Freedom Index 2025 Fund Investor Class. Ticker symbol here is FQIFX. This fund was also created in 2009, has the same expense ratio of 0.12%. One thing I should note here for you guys is that for all of the Fidelity Freedom Index Fund classes that we're talking about here, all of them have a minimum amount to invest of $0. There's no minimum like with Vanguard where you have to spend at least $1,000 for their target date funds or $3,000 for their standard mutual funds. You can invest for as little as one or five dollars. Let's see how the composition is different for the 2025 fund versus the 2015 fund. You can see here that we're made up of 60% just about, 60% stocks and about 40% bonds here. Again, the total market is the um, domestic stocks. And then for international stocks, you have the Fidelity Series Global X US Index Fund, 23% versus 35 here in the United States. And then we've got 33% in bonds and 7% in short-term debt and net other assets. So if we go back here to 2015, we see about 40% in stocks and about 40% in bonds and about 15 to 20% in short-term assets, which is the most conservative of them all. Whereas with 2025, we see 35, almost 60% in total stock, 
versus 33% in bonds and 7% in short-term debt and net other assets. This makes sense because we have more time until retirement, we have more invested in stocks rather than bonds. All right, let's talk about performance for the 2025 fund. You can see here average annual total returns. The one year return is 12.9%, three year return is 7.8%, five year return 10.59%, 10-year return is 7.7% and lifetime 8.67%. If we look back at 2015, the returns were not as high. That makes sense because you had more time in the stock market and the stock market outperforms the bond market most of the time, but it is it comes with more risk. All right, lastly here, let's take a look at one more Fidelity Freedom Fund. Let's look farther out here, the Fidelity Freedom Index 2060 Fund, investor class, FDKLX. Just like the others, it's got an expense ratio of 0.12%, though you should know that this fund was created in 2014, not 2009. This fund would be for those who are looking to retire in 2060, which is 40 years from now, which is quite a long time. This would be a perfect fund for somebody who is maybe 20 years old right now, maybe 25, depending on, of course, on when they want to retire. If we look here at the underlying asset allocation, we see here that 54% of the assets are in the total market US index fund. And I guess I should mention this, though I've mentioned it quite a few times on my channel. And I've got other Fidelity videos on my channel you can watch that talk in depth about the total stock market and owning the Fidelity total stock market. But the Fidelity total stock market index is a way to own the entire stock market. It is a cap weighted index fund though, which means that the largest assets in the fund and in the United States are going to be the ones that have the highest weighting. So companies like Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, etc. are going to have a much higher weighting in the portfolio than smaller companies that are just getting started or that are still growing but still very small. 54% in the Fidelity Series Total Market Index Fund. Then we've got 36.38% in international stocks. So we can see here 90% of the assets are in stock. And in bonds, we've got 6.69%. And then we've got in long-term US treasuries, 2.8% and short-term other assets, 2.8%. 90% stock, 10% bonds. This is a lot more risk, but then again, we've got 40 years until retirement. We've got plenty of time for the stock market to go crazy, ups and downs and ups and downs, because we know that long-term history tells us no matter what's going on in the world, over time, amongst those bumps, the stock market always goes up. Now for me personally, if I've got 40 years to invest, I don't wanna own any bonds. So I do think this is one of the faults of Fidelity Freedom Funds, and I've actually seen this as well in Vanguard's funds. A little bit too conservative for me, given the fact that I've got 30 to 40 years to invest. I'm owning, personally, myself, 0% bonds right now. I have no bonds. <laughs> and I don't plan on owning bonds until I'm at least maybe 15, 10 years out, if I own any bonds at all. Because if you know anything about my channel, I also own a lot of quality dividend stocks. All right, let's talk a little bit about performance for this 2060 fund. Average annual total returns. We've got the one year return at 17.08%, three year return is 9.04%, five year return is 13.49%, and lifetime return since 2014, remember not 2009, is 9.54%. There isn't a 10 year return. One thing to remember here is we don't have a really long track record for these. We can't go back 15 or 20 years. Most of them were created in 2005 to 2010. Some of them, like I said, 2014. Okay, so the big question here, are Fidelity Freedom Funds right for me? Well, let's ask ourselves a few questions. Are you an investor who wants to save for retirement, but wants to be relatively hands-off with managing the portfolio? By the way, there is nothing wrong with this approach. Just because you wanna learn more about investing and wanna get started investing, doesn't mean you have to handhold your investments all the way through retirement. It is absolutely 100% okay to start investing. That's the key, you gotta start and you gotta continue investing, but to be hands-off with the underlying investments once you get started. Do you like tracking your retirement progress over time, but want to make sure your investments are balanced and adjusted appropriately over time? If you said yes or you agree in any way with these two statements, then you're probably a great fit for a Fidelity Freedom Fund. Remember, like I mentioned earlier, Fidelity Freedom Funds do charge an expense ratio, like all index funds do, with the exception, of course, of Fidelity Zero Index Funds. I've got some videos on those if you wanna learn more about those, by the way, link in the description below. But all index funds and mutual funds, they have an expense ratio because there are underlying costs involved in managing your assets on your behalf. And with an expense ratio of point one, two percent, that might be a little bit higher than what you see on other Fidelity index funds, like the Fidelity 500 index fund, which is only 0.015%, or the Fidelity total stock market index fund. 0.12% is not high, 
and it is reasonable for somebody to manage diversification and adjusting your assets over time on your behalf. Hey guys, thank you so much for making it to the point in this video now where I'm gonna give you that extra piece of key information here. So the way that Fidelity's website is set up, it is set up to give you the wrong Fidelity Freedom Fund based on your search. Case in point here, if you go to the Fidelity website homepage and you were to come up here to the search and type in Fidelity Freedom Fund. The search results would take you down here. You could go and click on Fidelity Freedom Funds, Target Day Mutual Funds, and you would find yourself on that same page I was showing you earlier here. If you scroll down here, that widget for when you want to retire. Let's say you decided you want to retire in 2050. So that would be 30 years from now. We adjust it here to 30 years and click submit. Like we expect, it gives us the Freedom Fund 2050 and you can do the little fancy doohickey where you go do 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 and see all the differences in the pie. But ultimately, let's say you wanna invest in the Freedom Fund 2050. You click right here and you expect to get the right fund, but alas, you get the wrong Fidelity Freedom 2050 fund. And you can know that because it was created in 2006, not 2009, and the expense ratio is a horrible, tremendous 0.75% versus 0.12%. And just to give you some awareness here, if we were to take 0.75% and multiply it by that same 100,000, $750 per year rather than $120 a year to manage your assets. That is a much higher cost to manage your investments on your behalf. So what's going on here? You'll notice on this 2050 fund with the much higher expense ratio, the ticker symbol here is FFFHX, Whereas the actual one that we were looking at is the Fidelity Freedom Index 2050 fund, investor class, FIPFX, with that lower 0.12% expense ratio. So you've got two funds, almost the exact same name. So make sure that when you are searching for these Fidelity Freedom funds, once you decide on your target year, you use the word index in your search. Fidelity Freedom Index Fund. 2050 or 2055 or whatever year you choose. So you might be wondering yourself, what is the big difference? Why would they charge so much more for one fund and not the other? And why would they default to the much higher expense ratio? I don't know, but let's take a look here. First off, if we look at the asset allocation differences for the index fund, the one we were primarily focusing on, we can see here that we've got one, two, three, four, five different um, in underlying investments. Whereas if we look at the 2050 standard fund with the higher expense ratio, look at the difference in the underlying assets here. The asset allocations are fairly similar, about 90% in stocks, 10% in bonds. But you'll see here for this other fund with the higher expense ratio, look at all these different underlying assets here for equities, for developed markets, for emerging markets, for bonds, a ton of different assets here. So the big question for us here is, do all of these underlying assets that they own in one index fund lead to out performance because if it doesn't lead to outperformance, what's the point in paying more for these funds? Let's take a look here at the average annual returns and compare them between the two. So remember, this is for our, the fund we were focusing on. For the one year, 17%, three year, 9.04, five year return, 13.5, 10 year return, 9.26. Whereas with the higher expense fund, we can see here that the one year return is higher. 20.6% versus 17%. However, the three-year return is lower than our fund, 8.65 compared to 9.04. Then if we look at the five-year return, 13.79 versus 13.5, almost fundamentally the same thing. And then the 10-year return, 9.26% for our fund versus 9.43%. Lifetime returns are different because of the different starting years. So lifetime return for ours is 10.3% from 2009, whereas for this fund, lifetime return is 7.03% from 2006. So we can't put as much weight on that. So we can see here that the higher expense freedom fund did perform a little bit better in the most recent one year, but over the three, five and 10 year and lifetime returns, there's no evidence that it's outperforming. So make sure, I mean, if you want to buy those funds, you certainly can, but I prefer to buy funds that are gonna have lower expense ratios if the returns are almost the same. Again, just as a quick reminder, make sure if you wanna find the Fidelity Freedom Index Fund classes, the lower expense ratios, make sure you search for Fidelity Freedom Index and then the year that you want to retire to find those funds. They generally have increments from 2015 all the way out to 2065. Hopefully you found some value out of this video, guys. Make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. Leave a quick comment to say what you learned, what you liked, what you wanna hear more from me about. I'm all about making videos that you guys wanna watch. I don't wanna make videos I wanna watch because I'm the I'm only one person. So please let me know what questions you have, what other topics you wanna know about Fidelity Index funds, what other topics about general investing, and I also talk a 
lot about dividend stocks, so let me know if you want to learn more about dividend stocks as well. I've got a lot of content already on my channel, but I want to make new videos that you guys want to watch. And again, if you found value out of this video, guys, and you want to make sure you don't miss any future content from me, make sure to hit that like button below, but really more importantly, hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell to always be alerted to all of my new videos. I put out new videos every week on Tuesday and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day and please continue to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.